Alrighty, we are back at it. So this one is actually solving quadratics using square roots. So this chapter has been so long that I think it's hard to remember what we're doing. And what we're doing is solving a quadratic means you are finding the places that it crosses the x-axis. When it was in standard form, the way that we practiced in 4, 3, and 4, 4 was to factor and find those two places. Um, and when it's not, sometimes we would use square roots to solve. If you have standard form and B is zero, or if you have, meaning there's no plain X term, like in this problem, you got an X squared, but no plain X. Or the other time is if it's in that vertex form that we, ha we learned, um, which would be this guy down here, G. So we're gonna learn today, how do I solve when factoring doesn't work and instead I'm going to use um, square roots. So here, when r squared is equal to a number, the way to undo a square is to use the square root. So I would square root my r squared and I would square root this number, but when you introduce a square root sign into a solving, you always have to do plus or minus. Because like if my answer was a four, thinking backwards, I don't know if I had a positive or a negative two that got squared to become that four. So when you square root the four, you have to acknowledge, well, it could have been a two or a negative two to start with. So then these cancel and R will be either positive or negative the square root of that number. And now the thing is that we're gonna use what we learned yesterday, like an A that is you know nice and clean and I end up with the R and then on this side, the square root of 16 is gonna be either plus or minus four, straight up, done, clean. Problem is like in B, when I square root this side and then do plus or minus here, R is gonna be plus or minus the square root of 12. That is not a simplified answer, so I have to do what we learned yesterday and think about what perfect square fits into it. So in the end, my answer is gonna be a two root three, both plus or minus. Okay, so what it means by exact answers is that you're gonna have a simplified radical. and you're not gonna have decimals. So don't be the person on the test that puts decimals when it says no decimals. So here I'm square rooting both sides. I introduced it, so I use plus minus. I get X equals plus or minus the square root of 27. I consult my trusty blue factor sheet and it splits into nine and three. Nine's my perfect square, so X is gonna equal plus or minus a regular three times the square root of three. Those are my solutions or zeros. Here it's a little different because I have to get the x squared part alone before I can square root it. So I need to start by taking away three. So I have x squared equals 21 minus three, so 18. Now I can square root it. Remember to do your plus minus. But then I have to like scrutinize my answer and be like, what perfect square goes into 18 and according to my brain and or blue chart, it's nine times two. So I would end up with plus or minus three because that's the square root of nine root two. Here my x squared is right here. I need to get rid of the three and the five. So just like regular solving, I take away the five since it was added in and then to get that x squared alone, I'm gonna divide by three. So I'm back to x squared equals 12, which is turning out to be pretty common. And then these will cancel and I get this, but again, this is gonna turn into the square root of four times the square root of three, and the four comes out as a two and the three is stuck in there. Alrighty, so now this looks confusing because the whole the part that's squared is this whole thing. So I need to get rid of the one over five and I'm gonna do that by multiplying by five over one or just five. The five times one fifth cancels out, leaving me with just the squared part. And then seven times five is 35. So here, to get rid of the square, now that the squared part's alone, I square root over here, 
and over here, adding my plus minus to the number part, the square and the root cancel. So I have k plus three equals plus or minus the square root of 35. But when I look at my blue card, I have one and 35 and five and seven as my options and none of them are perfect squares. So I can't do anything with that. But to solve for k, I need it alone. And now that the plus three is out of the parentheses, I gotta take away three. Now, do not do 32 because you can't take the three away from a number under the radical. So you basically just end up with the number out front and then the plus or minus whatever your radical is. So that is my exact answer. I can't do a decimal, so I, that's as far as I can get. Here, the part that is squared that I need alone is right here. So I'm gonna have to do some solving by taking away the two now I have three times what I'm trying to get alone equals 216. Now I'm gonna divide by three. So X minus four, now I finally have that alone. What's that gonna be, 72? So it's time to get my square out of there by square rooting now that it's alone and I'm gonna do the other side with my plus minus. The root cancels the square and I have X minus four. And then I have to go to my card and the biggest perfect square that goes into that, there's others, but the biggest one is 36 times two. And the 36 comes out as a six and then the two stays in. But again, I'm trying to get X alone and it has a minus four, so I'm gonna add that to the other side. So when I'm done, I get X equals four plus or minus six root two. And again, I can't add the six and the four because one of them is attached to the root two. So it would be like having four plus six X. You can't put them together. So in some ways, the exact answers are easier because you're just leaving what you get. The only tricky part is as you work your way through the problems, you have to do that simplifying that we learned yesterday. All right, my friends, hope that helps.